Hi guys, welcome to Bold Learning. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and show your support. Today we are going to discuss about Mohr circle. To understand Mohr circle, we must first understand what is state of stress. Suppose that we have a small element in a structural member that could be subjected to a complex state of loading. We can simplify this state of loading into a 2D representation as shown in the figure for a st plain stress problem. We can see that we have three unique unknowns or three, three unique stresses, two normal and one shear. So they are called sigma x, sigma y and tau xy. Now suppose that I want to rotate this element and I need to calculate the corresponding transformed stresses. This is where we use the Mohr circles method. When I tra transpose my element the stresses are also changed from sigma x to sigma x prime, sigma y to sigma y prime and tau x y prime and we have rotated the element by theta. We do have several equations to calculate the transformed stresses. However, there is a much easier graphical way of doing this which was developed by Otto Mohr and today we will be getting into it. We will be also doing three examples so that you will never forget Mohr circle. The advantages of Mohr circle is that it's a graphical method so it is much easier to solve and much easier to visualize and there is no need to memorize equations. Now let's jump into geometry or or how we build the Mohr circle. So we have the element here, the 2D stress element. We have sigma x, sigma y and tau xy. Now let's construct the x-axis. The x-axis is the normal stress axis. As you may see that the x-axis is the sigma axis and the y-axis is the tau or the shear axis. You may note that sigma plus sigma is to the right and plus tau or the positive shear is marked to the uh, to as as negative y now the first step that we do is to define the center of the mohr circle to find the center of the mohr circle we need to calculate sigma average or the average stress for that we find sigma x plus sigma y over 2 once that is done, we need to find a point on the circle and that point is A sigma x comma sigma y or tau xy. Now once we find that, we can calculate sigma x minus sigma y over 2 and once that is calculated, we can easily find the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle is simply using the Pythagoras theorem where we calculate r by the square root of sigma x minus sigma y over to the whole square plus tau xy square. Now we can easily draw the Mohr circle. Once that is done, we can see, we can generalize and see how a rotation of the element would result in the transformed stresses. Suppose that I rotate my stress element by theta degree in the anti-clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction. So in the Morse, Morse circle, we have to just rotate the element or rotate that line CA about C by a measure of 2 times theta. This is because we have actually stressed, uh, we have actually stretched the 
two axes sigma x and sigma y which was initially 90 degrees we have stretched it to 180 degrees we have in fact doubled the normal stress directions so that is the reason why we use twice theta to calculate the transformed stresses once that is done mark a point p the distance from the origin to the to p along the normal axis is the sigma x prime and the vertical distance from the x-axis to the point P is the transformed shear tau x prime y prime. And when we extend P to Q through C, we get another point on the Mohr circle, which is sigma y prime. It is as easy as this. In the next part of the video, we will see an example to find out the principal stresses for any given state of stress. Please subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you.